Hi, and welcome back to the channel this week. And on this channel, we discuss all things financial services as it relates to the IMOs. We talk about comp plans. We talk about the IMOs. We talk about the scams that are going on out there in relation to the comp plans, the contract rates, you know, what's the best I IMO, what you should be looking for. And it's not just about the IMO, right? And I try to provide a independent review. I provide third-party documentation when available to back up my opinions. And we allow you to decide what's in your best interest going forward. Very confusing industry. It's actually a um, fantastic industry. The only trillion dollar industry on the planet. And there's a lot of players in this field. And some of them want you to make them a millionaire. All right. So this week we're going to be talking about I quit. I knew that that uh, thumbnail would get your attention. Uh, I guess you were thinking that I was going to quit. And what I want to talk about really is I quit as it relates to the I quit factor, right? In other words, what is your I quit factor? So let's be honest with each other for a moment. I talk to people all the time that have tremendous potential uh, in this industry that their I quit factor is just not there right? It's too low. The bar they're setting for themselves in this business is too low. In other words, they don't fully understand what's available, how their lives could be changed financially by being in this great industry, and they don't understand what price they're willing to pay in order to be successful in this business. This is not a natural talent. You're going to have to learn some basic skills. You need to identify the reason why you're in this business, and it has to be big enough and emotional enough to keep you strong enough, long enough to succeed in this business. Because if you do that, you'll succeed. I, again, I talk about this all the time on my channel. The one thing I love the most is this quote, the surest way to succeed is to be determined not to fail, right? So you can succeed in this business. Any of you can, if you watch this video, I promise you if we're working together, and you're getting this information on this channel and you're learning some basic techniques and you're willing to set your bar really, really high and understand what's the, what the potential gain that you have from sticking it out, you can be successful. Now it could be three weeks, it could be three months, it might be three years, but it will be worth it even though it may not be easy. Now look, let's be honest. If you're willing to not quit and keep pushing against the storms of resistance because there will be some, you can succeed. But most, as I said, have a very low I quit factor. What do I mean by I quit? This is what I mean. So let's be real honest with each other for just a moment. Look, if you're willing to not quit and keep pushing against the winds and the storms of resistance, we just came out of a major hurricane. Imagine that. I love this, this image of a bird you can find on the internet where it looks like a bald eagle that's sitting there hunched over and the range is driving down on him like he was sitting in, in on, on a perch in a hurricane and yet he endures, right? He doesn't turn around and try to head for cover. He endures it. It's kind of like that in any success. Look, no success is easy, right? And that's what I want to talk about today. But you can succeed if you're willing to push back against those winds of resistance and storms of resistance, right? But many of you have a very low I quit factor. Meaning again, again, what do I mean by I quit factor? This is what I mean. What will come your way that will make you throw your arms up and say, hey, this is just not for me, I quit, right? I quit, those horrible words. And I can't stand people that quit, right? I hate the whole idea of quitting because I realize that you can succeed and what do you really get? It's sad. It saddens me to see people do that. So again, what do I mean by I quit? This is what I mean. What will come your way? What storm? What wind? What criticism? What word? What lack of appointments? Lack of sales? You know, poor leads, good leads, you know, driving two hours and getting ports. They're not home. They forgot you were coming. You know, you go on 12. Can you, can you go on 12 appointments, close none, and still put that credit card back out there, buy some more leads, and get back there and start dialing in? Because if you can't do that, you need to stop wherever you're at, go back to your why, and figure out what is in this business for me that I want so bad that I'm willing to keep pushing back against those. Look, life will only give you what you're willing to accept. You can't be willing to accept what life gives you. You had to be willing to fight and design your life around the way you want to live it. 
and you can do that if you have a high enough I quit factor, right? So again, write the things down is what I would encourage you. Write them down. What obstacles do you see coming your way potentially that might knock you out of this business, right? The things that might derail you or your determination to succeed in this business. You have to figure out, again, what your why is, and that why has to be very emotional to keep you strong enough, long enough to push past the failures and reach success. Look, come to grips with this one truth. The only thing that will beat you in this business is the white space on your calendar, right? Period. Nothing else except, of course, lack of desire to be independent of any boss and to design your life around your job. You have to have those things in front of you. I have all over my office, in my car, my day planner, this little statement. I know what I'm fighting for. So every time I pick the phone up when I don't want to, every time I go on an appointment when I'd rather stay home, I mean, all these things, I refer back to that statement and I know what it is I'm fighting for and what that item is or what that lifestyle is or whatever it is that that moment is driving in my life. I know why, why I'm getting ready to pick that phone up. I may not like it. I may rather stay home. I may not want to go to an appointment, but I know why I'm doing it. And you have to be able to identify that in order to push back against those very same wins. Okay, so I want to talk in this video real quickly about not me, not about me quitting. I'm not going anywhere. I love this industry. been doing it for a very, very long time. Since I was about 23 years old, I've been in the life insurance industry, both captive, non-captive, independent, all those things. And I know, you know, what potential is for all of you if you're willing to stay in the business. This I had a very emotional last three weeks and I don't want to make every video where I discuss this but I understand clearly even more passionately than I did a month ago what we do with time. Time is precious and we do control how we spend it but here's the thing right time and money everybody fights with. I know a lot of people that have a lot of time but they have no money. I know a lot of people that have a lot of money but they have no time. In this business you can have both time and money. You can have control over both time and money. But you have to be willing to fight against the strong winds because life is going to push you back as soon as you try to start advancing because it only wants to give you what it's willing to give you. You have to say, no, I'm not, I reject that. I, I know that I'm a good enough person to go get the kind of lifestyle I want. I only have one life to live and I'm going to live it my way. And if you understand those things, I mean, look, we all get weak need. We all have difficult days, we have difficult months. I had a very difficult, challenging last three weeks. But what, it, what I learned by that is, is that we all end up making decisions based on our wallet. If our wallet's not deep enough, then we have to make decisions to go back, run back to a job or run back to some, finance, some sort of financial security, right? So the, the fact that I had to leave my mother early was because I could no longer stay there in that hospital running 200 to 250 dollars a day in a hotel rent a car three months three three thousand miles away was painful right i'm very blessed that i was able to do it do it at least that much but it's still at the end of the day i need to get back to work so now i know that i need to get back to work i'm not where i want to be in my life because i not only do i have other family members that may need me in the future i now understand even more so the value of time and time and money, right? We can control both of those here by personal production, by residual income, and if you want to build an agency, then you can also do passive income. And with all those three things coming in, you now have more control over your life. I'm not talking about being wealthy. I'm not talking about being a millionaire. I'm talking about being able to go to Florida, be, be on my mom's bedside at 200 plus a day with a one-way ticket, not knowing when I'm gonna come back, and end up being down there for several, three, four weeks. Right? It's very costly, very expensive, but because of this business, I was able to do that. And I'll never forget the memories that took place uh, during those three or four weeks. Right? But let's talk about the success model. Look, don't operate with the wrong model of success. So this whole video is about. We came from a generation that said, hey, look, if you can't, you know, if you go out there and try and try and try and you, get, you, and you keep getting pushed back and you keep getting failures, it must not be for me. I've decided to go in a different direction. I tried it and it didn't work out. Look, it does work. There's examples all over this industry, people making, you know, three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars a year just in personal production, right? No team, no recruiting, just going out there writing production and taking care of uh, the need that's out there. The, the opportunity has been validated. It, all it takes now is for you to learn maybe some new skills. And we all come in this business 
in a different place. Maybe you're maybe you maybe you have no skills in terms of uh, relating to people or whatever it is, or presentation skills or sales skills or whatever. But you can get there through personal development, right? So again, it's not reject that whole concept that if I if I run up up against any kind of resistance, uh, it's not for me, right? Because you'll never get to failure, right? So most people look at that. I need to clean my board off here one second. Now I'll just do that so you can see it. Most people look at this like like it's like it, it looks something like this. It should be a success model, right? And then me, and then failure. With you in the middle, right? That's how most people view it, right? So you know it's either success over here or failure over here, and I'm kind of in the middle. It's not that way at all, right? I thought that my goal was to do everything in my power to move towards success and to move away from failure, but I realized that the correct model looked more like this. Me, right? Moving towards failure, which we all do, because we're all learning something new, then to then success. At least that way, I, that time I spelled it correctly, right? It's not me in the middle, or success on the left, and failure on the right. It's me down here, passing through failure to success because I have a strong why, and I know what I'm in this business for. I know what I'm fighting for. I'm not going to give up. Look, you cannot stop a man or a woman who will not quit, right? So that's what you need to have, a strong I quit factor, right? Failure is not a destination to be avoided, but rather a stepping stone to get to what I really want out of life, right? Most people get to failure and they figure they're, they're heading in the wrong direction, right? And they turn around and go back, right? And head in the opposite direction. They think that success must be in the other direction, but it's not, it's straight ahead. It's not you in the middle of success this way and you turn around and you head back to success, right? It's pushing through failure to get to success. And I would, uh, I would draw, draw a trophy, but I'm not that good of an artist, right? So look, success is straight ahead. Keep moving forward, pushing back against the resistance and those storms and strong winds that are trying to derail. Look, every time you make a decision to move your life in a positive direction, the winds of resistance will come. That really should be more of a confirmation to you that you are heading in the right direction, right? If it's too easy, it's probably too good to be true and won't last. But if you're pushing really hard against something, trying to succeed, you're probably going in the wrong direction. Someone's trying to stop you from doing that. We are taught by some leaders to never use the word failure, right? It's a big bad word, the F word, right? Rather, we use the word glitch or setback or to say something like, uh, you know, I tried it, but I hit a glitch, right? Just say I failed because that's what it, the truth is. Right? And rather than go through it, grow through it and move towards success. No wonder everyone on this planet thinks that failing is something that should be avoided at all costs. We sugarcoat it. We dance around it. And we talk about it as if it were death. The best way to, to desensitize yourself to a word is to use it. Right? We see this in politics today. We won't go there. Right? But you know the kind of examples that I'm talking about. The best way to desensitize yourself to an action is to do it. Same thing, right? It's the same thing as the word no. Let me share with you an example. When we were kids, we heard the word no a lot, right? But did we accept the word no as children? I got grandkids, and I can tell you right now, they don't. So it goes something like this. I think you'll get some enjoyment out of this, all right? Here's, I'm gonna role play this a little bit, right? The kid says, hey, mommy, can I have a cookie? Mommy says, no. Kid says, mommy, I want a cookie. Mommy says, no. The kid says, please, can I have a cookie? Mommy says, no, right? The kid says, please. Mommy said, I said, no. Kid says, pretty please, mommy. Mommy says, no, no, no. That's what I said, no, right? The kid says, Mommy, why can't I have a cookie? And Mommy says, because I said no, and I'm not going to say it again. Then the kid says, but why? And guess what Mommy said? Listen to me, young man. I'm not going to say no again. The answer is no. Ten seconds later, guess what? The kid says, Mommy, I really want a cookie. And Mommy says, okay, for heaven's sake, just one, and don't ask me again. Have you ever witnessed this? I'm sure you have. And what the kid learned by all of this is what? That child learned that if they pushed hard enough, long enough, and didn't quit, he will get what he wants. 
somewhere along the line as adults, the tenacity we had as children got beat out of us, right? The kid knows not to take rejection personally, but as adults, we often forget about that. Years ago, I read a great book called Go For No. And what they did in that book was they started really looking at what set successful people apart from the masses. And it was this, their willingness to fail was the number one thing at the top of the list. Look, statistically, only 5% of the population will be able to retire without assistance. 5% will, re will be able to retire without some sort of assistance. 36% will be dependent on friends, relatives, charity, or government for their survival. And who do you think gets to be the lucky 5%. So as you wrap this up, look, most people don't like to say, I failed. And that's because you've been programmed to think that failing leads to failure. Remember, failure and becoming a failure are two very different things. Successful people fail eagerly while failures avoid failing. The whole point of being willing to fail more is to become successful. So that one day you won't look back on your life and say to yourself, I am a failure. I love this saying, and I'm gonna leave you with this. You can't beat the numbers and the numbers can't beat you. So let's be honest. If you're willing to not quit and keep pushing against the storms of resistance, you can succeed. Most have a very low I quit factor. So in closing, I would encourage all of you to repeat these words. I like to fail, saying it with more confidence and belief. I like to fail. It moves me closer to success. So now repeat these words. I fail big and I fail often. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but no will never hurt me. So let's discuss the three things in this business that you must be willing to do and have this model. I will until, no matter what, whatever it takes, then you can decide if you're willing to take the next step. Number one, buying leads. Create a budget for your advertising costs. In our business, leads are our advertising budget, right? Number two, learning the phone script. Ongoing coaching and objection handling. Learned knowledge, activity knowledge. Learn the script, go do it, come back, learn some more. Make the dials, $200 per week if you're working with $2 leads. Run the appointment, drive 50 minutes to two hours, earn the $500 to $1,000 per sale that you're gonna make. Learn an in-home presentation, write the application and get it from submission to commission. I hope that helps you today. I enjoy being with you, I'm passionate, I'm excited to help all of you. Give me a call. Look, if you need help, I'm here to help you on this channel. If you wanted to have a discussion, call me, text me, email me, that's what I'm here for. If you are looking for a new IMO to join or haven't even joined one yet, you're in testing or having even started testing and you're looking at this industry and if I can help you and Angela can help you, please give us a call, reach out to us, let's have a conversation. If you're stuck somewhere and they won't let you leave, give me a call. We'll help you either way. Absolutely, full disclaimer, we are trying to build our own organization as well. we got agents all over the country. If you haven't even taken your test yet, give me a call. I'll save you some money on the test. And as usual, look, don't forget to mash the bell. You'll get instant notifications of new videos we put up or live streams. Uh, click the subscribe button. I'd be grateful to have you part of the channel. Make some comments, like the video, and share it out to other people that may be looking at the industry that we may be able to help. I'm grateful for you being here, and thank you for being part of this channel. And I'm glad that somehow I'm adding some value to your search or to your career while you're out there trying to be successful in this great. We need you. The industry is very, very large and there's plenty of opportunity for everybody. Sharpen your skills, raise your eye, quit factor very high, figure out what might take you out of this business and erase it, identify it and push it aside. Remember, the greatest way to succeed is to be determined not to fail. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Bye-bye.